both my undergraduate and master's in uh, engineering physics. Uh, initially, I was working more in theoretical physics. I the first thing that, that got me into physics was uh, cosmology, trying to understand the universe, where does the universe come from, all these like big questions that, um, and, and that fascinated me a lot. I started working on it and I realized that uh, I may not, have, may not be the, the, the best suitable person for doing a purely theoretical work. So then even still in engineering physics, I shifted a bit my, my focus to more uh, engineering uh, problems. So then I worked in uh, control and data acquisition systems in uh, nuclear fusion. Uh, so I, then I, I, I worked for a couple of years in uh, management consulting, which has nothing to do with science, uh, because I, I decided at, back then that I didn't want to continue that path. Uh, it was a, a very interesting experience. Um, I, I, again, I, I learned a lot. So all these different experiences, I tried to take the best out of them. I, I hit moments where I, I assess whether I'm, I'm doing something that I like and I'm, I'm it's not just doing something that I like, where I'm actually doing what makes most sense for me to be doing at the time. Uh, and uh, for some times, uh, I've come to realize that that was not the case, and when that happens, I change. Uh, and maybe I don't put that much of a... Of, uh, I don't think that hard about where to go next. It's usually... I'm, I'm kind of impulsive, so I'm. it's something that at the moment seems more attractive, and I end up going to that, even if it means completely changing uh, what I'm doing at, at the time. So right now uh, I'm studying um, some mechanisms of uh, motion perception uh, in the cortex. So for example, some people uh, that have very specific lesions, while they can perceive uh, everything about the all the inf visual information about the world, they can identify objects, they cannot perceive motion. So they have difficulties in, for example, filling a cup because they can see the, the liquid that they're putting inside the cup, the different levels, but they don't perceive that the, the, actually, the actual liquid flowing into the cup. So motion is a, a very specific uh, information stream that we, we extract from the, the visual world. Uh, we train animals to basically uh, to report the direction of a, a stimulus, of a moving stimulus, mm -hmm. um, and they, when, when it's moving in one direction, they do one action, when it's moving in another direction, they do another action. Then we can manipulate uh, neuronal activity, uh, and we can also record and try to identify which parts of the, in the cortex, that, that's the part of the visual system that I'm uh, working on, uh, are involved uh, in this motion, pro uh, uh, motion processing. So, so when I come to the lab and I do an experiment, sometimes it works, other times it doesn't work, um, and many times it doesn't work in a row, uh, and so it's hard to not uh, be certain uh, of the output of our work. The fact, the same. <laughs> uh, so the fact that we don't know uh, if it's going to work, when it works, we kind of, we can say that we know something very specific, uh, that maybe we are the only people, the only, we are the only person in the world that at the moment is seeing that thing. Uh, uh, While having all this uncertainty can be very frustrating and hard to deal with, it also presents this opportunity for uh, learning something new. I like to see what I'm doing as kind of moving the boundaries of, uh, of our current understanding, of the current knowledge. Uh, and so it's, it's very uh, rewarding uh, when, when something works and we can say, ha, I, was, I, I made this little contribution into uh, basically advancing uh, our current understanding of how the brain works.